sometimes I, 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 you know, I was in a meeting with Judd, and I thought Judd was putting stuff in his phone. And I walked around behind him, and I saw he was playing a game on his phone. He wasn't even paying attention in the meeting. And I thought he was entering all this stuff in the phone. He was making notes. Nobody's making notes but me. <laughs> as far as in the, in the IT department. And so when I when I saw him doing that, and he realized that I saw him, he just kind of looked around and s looked up at me and smiled. And I'm like, dude. You know, it's Look, like, you busted me playing solitaire. <laughs> and it's like, I like to have a good time just like everybody else. But my dad always told me that when you're at work, you're there for eight hours and, and, and you work. You yeah. work, you do your job, and you do it, and you don't be playing around. Uh, you don't be throwing, you know, uh, pencils at the ceiling and trying to get them to stick, which is what Gary was doing. And so, you know, anyway. Or uh, Facebooking or shopping online. Or well, there was a lot of that stuff going on, watching videos. I mean, one day the, the IT department was, it was so loud in the IT department because Gary had his music turned up, and I'm like, dude, man. You're like giving me hearing damage. And so um, the one lady that likes to ride motorcycles, I can't remember what her name is, but um, she worked right outside the uh, IT department. And, and she said, you know, she, she wrote an email saying, you know, if people could please be a little quieter, you know, because she can't, you know, hear people on the phone while she's trying to talk on the phone. And Martha almost fired her for that. Mm -hmm. Because she can, you know, she complained, and that's pretty much what happens. So I brought my complaints to um, um, to Sean, operations manager. Yeah, thinking that that was because they always said if you have something that's bothering you, bring it to us and all that kind of stuff, and you can bring it to any manager. It's all good. So basically, Sean, Sean goes, "Well, you need to discuss it with them." And I'm like, "I can't discuss it with them. They're the ones that <laughs> are doing this." And so I finally just said, "Just, just forget it. Don't worry about it." Well. They wait until the work is actually done, and I I can tell that you know this this happened about a month before I left, and I could tell that you know um, what was uh, Martha's secretary Meg Hepner Meg, Meg Hepner Meg Hepner was treated me very badly. I mean, she you could tell she was mad at me. So basically, the word was getting around yeah. that I had complained, and this was supposed to be confidential between. You know, between Sean, Sean and myself. Reporting fraud, waste, and abuse. Yeah. Yes. And so I thought, okay, I'm just going to forget about it. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, keep my head down, do my job, do the best I can. Those guys can do whatever they want. You know, it's all good. So basically, the day after and we are basically done, I get fired. I get hauled in and then get fired. And, uh, you know, it's basically, I, I told, you know, I. You know, I told Sean, I said, you know, Sean, this was supposed to be tw between you and me. And Martha goes, I'm privy to everything. Well, basically, it seems like everybody was privy to everything because D. Wells was treating me badly. Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of people that were treating me badly. And it was obvious that the word was getting around. It was that group, that, that close-knit group who hang out at Martha's house and yep. drink Kool-Aid, you know? And, you know, Michael told me, you know, who was who was the manager, He he was... He had to leave because the place was driving him crazy. He looked so stressed out and everything. And he told me that he was so glad that I was there because I actually would help them. And I did help them as much as as much as I as I could. Um, the people just, you know, the people really just loved me, and uh, because I would help them, I would go out and help them. Um, you know, Gary couldn't even really, you know, one day Gary had a problem with his computer, and. Uh, you know, he couldn't figure it out, so I fixed it for him. And uh, um, Judd couldn't remember MS Config, which is the syntax to get into the configuration. He goes, what, what's, the, you know, what's the thing for getting in the... And Judd is so bad at communicating, and, you know, bless his heart, he is really bad at communicating. And I was trying to figure out what he was talking about. And finally, it's like, you mean MS Config? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So he can't really remember the syntax. He's you know, I think it's really hard for him to learn new things, and it's not his fault. I mean, he's he's been he's been injured, yeah. and it's not yeah. his fault. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gathering with the two by four, it, traumatic yeah. brain yeah. injury. He, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I I've never. And I feel bad for him, but it's like you know, being in the IT department may not be the best vocational choice for him. I'm not sure. So both your information technology managers yeah. couldn't figure out how to fix the computer. No, we couldn't. And, and there was a lot of other little things around there. We had a, uh, we had a, uh, um, 
a dryer fail um, like two weeks before we were going to move into a new building. We had new dryers and new washer and dryer coming for the new building. Um, and uh, they were just going to uh, order another dryer for that those two weeks. And I'm like, well, let's let's take a look at it, you know. And, well, the exhaust was plugged. And it's like if they'd have put a new dryer in there, it'd still do the same thing. So, and I'm like, well, don't we have a maintenance department around here that cleans these things out and does this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, so, preservation. Yeah, and it's like, well, where are they, you know? And, and so, so I was happy to fix it. I was, I was absolutely happy, because I love, I just love fixing stuff. Yeah. And so I was happy to do it, and I, I, I fixed it for them, and, and, uh, but there was a lot of little things around the building like that, you know, that Gary had done some plumbing stuff, so I, I didn't touch the toilet because I didn't want to insult him that, you know, we weren't going to be there that much longer. If we, if we had been, I'd, I'd, fix, I'd fixed it. And it just had the wrong flush valve on it. It was, it was dumping seven gallons down the thing instead of, you know, like, you only need like a gallon and a half, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got ours down to 1.3, so it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, they were, so they were wasting a ton of water every time they flushed that thing, too. But, so, let's see, what else is on my list here? Oh, but, um, I don't think you covered it when you were talking about, um, you know, the overtime and, and, and what it took, you know, to oh, even true. remotely get some of it done. They still owe you... Well, they still owe me $8,500. $8,500 yeah. that uh, Milan Transit still has not paid you. Which I wasn't really going to worry too much about the overtime as long as I had a job. But, you know, I, I, I gave them stuff. I mean, I gave them, you know, like 30 to $50 worth of, of network connectors. I just yeah. had them laying around. I said, here, I'm probably not going to use them. And I, I just gave them to them. I mean, I gave them stuff. I gave them my time. You know, and, and I was like, oh, well, that's, that's cool. I figured I'd have a job. I'd be there until I retired, and, you know, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, now that they've fired me, I have, have a little problem with them owing me, <laughs> owing me some money. And for wrongly. And for wrongly, wrong, and for wrongly, wrongly firing me. You know, when I when I bring issues to someone and you know, if you don't want to do something about it, that's that's fine and I'll just go on about my business. I've brought the issues up, you know about them. You can't say I didn't say something. But when you fire me for saying something, I think that's pretty much wrong. When so. you, <clears throat> especially when um every US federal department has on their um, home pages how to report fraud, waste and abuse and um, no retaliation, no yeah. anything should ever come of anybody doing that. And uh, but then again, Martha Rose and her yeah. team are above the law, so that's how you. Well, I didn't even feel that I could claim my unemployment, which I was, which, which basically was due me because I heard stories about Martha going in and hiring a lawyer at great expense to go and take it back, and you got to pay it all back. So I'm like, well, I might as well not bother, you know. So. Absolutely. <coughs> She took somebody to court, one of the female um, drivers that she fired, another wrongful termination, and probably spent ten times the amount in lawyers in order to recoup $6,500 of unemployment paid to this individual who is deserving of it. You are deserving of it. Yeah. Yet she takes um, an individual um, who was CDL driving recklessly, a couple times. In fact, one time in front of Gary and somebody else, and they were like, oh, you know, that's just the way he is. Um, and when she did not fire him or reprimand him, I'm sure he didn't take your analysis either, um, the public went to the board and said, the board, you need to handle this. So long story short, that goes through the board. They were supposed to fire him. Well, I have him recorded, wasn't meaning to, but um, instead of uh, firing him, they laid him off and gave him unemployment. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I noticed that, you know, that a lot of the stuff, you know, the network that we had was a mess. I mean, it, it, was, it was totally done wrong. And when I, when I approached Judd about it, he goes, he goes uh, in quotes, it was like that when I got here. <laughs> And it's like, okay, how many years have you been here? You couldn't straighten it out in all these years. 
It's like, um, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, yeah, you should have went ahead and straightened it out. Of course it was like that when you got here, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is that is that the excuse? That was the excuse. Mm. And so a bunch of times he got busted, you know, watching videos. Well, maybe instead of watching videos, he should have been doing maintenance on the computers, yeah. blowing the dust out of them, you know, doing his paperwork, you know, figuring on, you know, maintenance schedules and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know... Or, or at least watching videos on how to do maintenance on computers. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, basically this whole thing with Barb, you know, Gary told me one day that, that he could talk Martha into anything. And he was right. He could yeah. talk him into anything. Basically, <laughs> pumpkin, stop it. Basically one day, um... Uh, then you're talking Barb, you're talking Barb Savory. Yeah, Barb, and, uh, that's, uh, the I previous, lost my train of thought pre there, yeah. previous financial. Yeah, Bar <clears throat> Barb Savory was was thrown under the bus. She did not do what, what they said she did, and I know that for a fact. When uh, one day uh, we were all called into Barb's office, there was Judd, myself, and Martha, and Barb Savory was complaining that we were out of money. You know, we ran out of reserves. And Gary goes, well, you know, we can't stop now. We've got to bring this in. And partly right, partly wrong. I mean, it's like maybe we, maybe we should have tightened our belt a little bit and not bought some of these things that were, that were way more expensive than what we needed. There was much cheaper alternatives and making all these mistakes. Um, but it was, it was, you know, let's see. What, what was my other point here? Let's see. Um, besides the, oh, uh, oh, the yeah. money spent, the future. Oh, oh, yeah. The, the, the. Martha said she wasn't getting her reports. Cash well, flows. She was never getting financials. She never received a cash flow from, yeah. Barb, from Barb Savory. I know, I know that that was not true because one day Barb called me kind of freaking out. And I went in there to see what was going on. And her printer would not print in color. And uh, I, I fixed it for her. And uh, that is exactly what she was printing. And it was for Martha. And that was why she was freaking out is because... You know, she's like, Martha needs this, you know, or you know, basically my head's going to, you know, yeah. chopped off. Yeah, if I don't get this cash flow to her. Yeah. Martha and, and, never got them, though. Huh. And, and believe me, I did not like Barb all that much because she really, really kind of treated a lot of people kind of badly. But she was probably under a massive amount of pressure. And she did not do what, what Martha accused her of. So I know that for a fact because I was there that one day and I saw her getting her, her, her reports. Because so. and supposedly Barb Savory never advised Martha Rose that she was uh, using all the reserves, which was supposed to be the local match for the U.S. DOT FGA for the building, as to uh, state of good repairs. But yeah, that so right there she um, she advised Martha that they had no more reserves. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, another another thing that I noticed was uh, we st when we when we put the the cloud computers and the virtual environment computers a lot of them wouldn't boot well part of that was because we had to use extension cables <laughs> and so there's a lot of EMI that comes off those extension cables yeah. the other problem was that Judd we spent so much money on that power room to have clean power and Judd did not use shielded cables for the computers so all that cable that got strung through that building was not shielded. Oh, that's how we get like, the um. Because I because I asked him, I said that wasn't shielded cable. No, I'm like, oh my god. It's like no wonder they won't boot. Mm. Mm. That but that's they, huge. They were, getting, they were getting so much interference off the power cables, yeah. you know, those extension cords, because we had to use these long cords, and you know, getting the longer that cord is, the more EMI oh, you're going to yeah. get off yeah. of it. Yeah. And, and that's so, a, yeah. Uh, also, the wrong phones were ordered. They were for the um, office. Yeah, the the computers were real slow, and and we realized that they were the wrong phones. They were not gigabit phones. They were you know ten one hundreds, and so they were running a lot slower. And yeah. so all those phones had to be sent back at great expense, and then you know more phones in. Had to reprogram all these phones. We had to do so many things over again because of all the mistakes. Basically, Judd never wrote down plans for things. We're setting up the server, and he goes, oh, just stick this thing here, and just stick this thing here. <laughs> so we do it, and then he goes, and we make cables for it. We do it, and we make cables for it. And then he's like, oh, we got to put this in. That, that's got to go in between here. 
Well, now we got to make more cables. Yeah. Well, these cables are just junk now, you know, and it's like, and, and, all, and, and all the time ones. we put in it. <laughs> and here's Gary using an impact to tighten the, the bolts in a, in a server rack, uh -huh. and, and, he, and he tore up a bunch of the bolts, and we couldn't get them back out to get the components back oh out. Because he's like, he's using a hand <laughs> impact. I mean, those things tighten it to like 100, 100 to foot pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the and electronics, and you don't want to have all, yeah, that vibration in there as it is anyways. But well, yeah, you don't want to... down? Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think yeah. of that. You don't want all that. They're supposed to be hand-tightened. They even come with their own little yep. wrench. Yep. And it's like, oh, my God, dude, what are you doing? And I and I could see doing it with, with a hand drill. You know, you, you could you could turn that down yeah. and you could do that where, where it would just click at the end. But we're talking an impact. I mean, massive torque. Uh, tools. Oh. Yeah, and, and I'm like, oh, my God. You know, so, you know, I mean, you really can't say much to him, you know, because he's my superior. But I just kind of like, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that. No. You know? He's your superior, and Martha Rose was very fond of was Gary. Was very fond of Gary. And, very fond. And, and you know, and I liked Gary. Okay, you know, I, I don't have any, any personal issues with him. He always treated me. You know, he always treated me good. It's just, uh, but except there were times where he'd give me dirty looks. And those dirty looks were if I didn't come in on a Saturday. Well, you know, it's like, well, you know, that's overtime and. And th I did come in on a lot of Saturdays. I came in on Sundays, you know, during the time that we were switching over and, and yeah. we needed to get it done as quick yeah. as possible. I did come in on those days, but, you know, I wasn't supposed to be working those extra hours. In fact, Sean actually kicked me out a couple of times and said, you know, he's, he's doing this with his watch. You know, like, hey, it's after hours. I stayed there. My hours were 7 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. I stayed there until 5 on a regular basis. And one time when, when, the, uh, when the bridge went out, you know, they were calling me at home to change the website. And uh, so Tom, Tom in dispatch was calling me at home, you know, to up, update yeah. me so I could update the website from home. I did a lot of things from home. I was actually sick two days because I had, had some stomach problems, and I think it was, a lot of it was because I was starting to have a stomach ache going to work. Yeah. You know, stress. because I, I didn't know what they were going to do next. And I'm like, oh, my God. The you stress know? of a hostile work environment. Yeah, I mean, I actually have training in computer technology. Neither one of them went to school for it, and and that's fine. You can you can self teach yourself a lot. I've self taught myself a ton of stuff. I feel like you don't really have to go to school for that stuff. I go on the internet and I learn that stuff. But instead, Judd goes and calls his little guru. Uh, how do I do this? Why don't you Google it? You know, it's not everything you need is on Google. Yeah, because obviously the computer guru. And they're charging money. You know, that's yeah. costing Island Transit oh, money. A lot of money. And it's like, and I told him one day, and he goes, oh, "I just call my guru," and and I'm like, "Dude, we're supposed to be the gurus." <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. You were the guru. You were the guru. They they had no clue. Yeah, I they tried. Know. I tried my best. Yeah. So, but uh, everybody there liked me. They were they were shocked that I was fired. But and the first thing that 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 Michael asked me was, "Did you complain?" Mm -hmm. so I guess if you complain, you're done. Yes, you are, you are a... Which, which I, I'm like, not really, I didn't complain. And I didn't consider it really complaining. I was just trying to bring some things forward and say, what do we do about this? Yes. Or do we just do nothing? Yes. And I guess we do nothing. Well, yes. uh, except for fire you. Yeah, and so... If you complain, you are a non-loyal employee. And um, yeah. Martha Rose doesn't like that. Yeah. Um, if she... If you're loyal, she'll take care of you, and whatever. So yeah, you. Well, people people actually gave up getting help from Gary and Judd, and there was a lot of people there, especially people in the, in the dispatch, that were very disappointed in the uh, in that part. Well, one day, this is a good one. <laughs> one day, I, I walk in, you know, because they they ask me um, if I could set up a printer for them on a, on a different computer. And I'm like, sure. So I go in there and I set it up, and I notice that there's this incessant beeping sound in it. And I go, how long has that been going on? They go, I don't know, for weeks. You know, it happens every now and then, and then it stops. Well, it was the up system, you know, which is basically a uninter uninter uninterruptible power supply. power supply. And it's just a small portable unit, and it has a little battery in it. And the battery's like, you know, you can get them for 20 bucks. And... You know, I, I told told Gary, I said, we need to put a battery in that thing. He goes, uh, we're not going to put a battery in that thing. And I said, okay. Um, but that beeping is driving him nuts. He's like, oh, that's, that's their problem. So I went in, 
and since it didn't work anyway because it needed a battery, yeah. I, just took, I just took it out of the circuit, you know, so we didn't have a, a, enough system in there. We had, we had uh, surge protectors and that's good enough. But uh, at least it didn't drive them crazy. I know. Yeah, I can imagine it's that little beeping that would be enough to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it drove them absolutely nuts. <laughs> but you know, it's some of these things. Oh, oh, Judd, when he was setting up the the, the 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 computers, the virtual computers, basically the server is split into a bunch of virtual machines, and you log on to that server, and it's a virtual machine. It's a it's an entire installation of, of Windows Seven. You know, each one's a Windows 7 Pro. They're all split off. Everybody has their own virtual environment that they log into with that cloud machine. The cloud box only has enough brains to log on to that server, and that's it. That's all it. That's all it has. Everything is done on the server, which is actually a, it's actually a really great idea because you can pool your your all your resources, your RAM, everything, and then you can allocate it to different machines. Um, Judd only allocated two gigs of RAM. Windows 7 will not operate worth a damn on two gigs of RAM. So everybody's like, my computer's really slow. So all those had to be reallocated. Again, he also called every machine the same name. You can't do that. He brought the whole network down because of it. <laughs> it worked for a few days. And then this machine went down, then this machine went down, then this machine yeah. went down. It was like one at a time we finally figured out Oh my God! You named them all the, all same, the name. same name. You can't do that. The, the network. <laughs> I was amazed because normally you can't do that because it, as soon as you do, it will it will come up as a conflict and say that there is a, another machine with the same yeah. name on this network. And and Windows does not like that at no, all. And it will come up be. and tell you. Well, in this virtual cloud environment, it's different. It does not tell you. So he set up every one of them with the same name and it took days to find out the, the problem and then every, everybody was down for a while because they had to all be redone and one day he also brought us down and, and actually caused a bunch of corruption in some people's accounts and I think one of them was actually Martha's um, because he plugged in in a massively expensive router we're talking these you know rack mount routers that are huge and they have tons of plugs into them and they're not like a home router that you just plug it in and you go. Oh, yeah. You know, which they really should be configured too. You know, because you know you should you should change a bunch of things and passwords, all these kind of things. Yeah. He's plugged it in, so there we go. <laughs> well, he had, he caused a broadcast storm. You know, which basically what happens is it, it 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 throws the systems into a loop, and you start seeing these things flashing and faster and faster and faster and faster, and it's like this loop that goes faster and faster. Well, eventually it's using all the resources. Nobody could log on. Nobody could do anything. And it even caused some machines to be corrupt and, and had to be redone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there were so many things that were done over again and over again and over again because of incompetence. And, you know, I'm trusting him to do all this stuff right because he's talking to his gurus, you know, <laughs> on the phone. And I should have actually been, you know, you know, riding roughshod more over it, but, you know, He's the genius that, you know, Gary kept calling him a genius, and every time he would call him a genius, I would just cringe, because I'm like, oh my God, if he's a genius, I must be God. You know? <laughs> right. Like, and I'm not a genius by a long shot. But you know enough to know about EMF and EMI and shielding and well, all see, that, I, and I, I designed, don't know those importance to electronics. Well, I designed circuitry. I designed circuitry, and, you know, I, was, I have been uh, designing circuitry and programming since, since the 80s. And uh, I actually designed a bunch of stuff for General Motors. This this is what one of the items that I still have. Yeah. It's actually kind of a cool little unit. It's a it's a it's a thing to. Uh, this is a vacuum tester box, and I built it right. in, built it into a vacuum tester box. But it actually uh, it actually um, uh, it works with GM's security system. It and says hello. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Hello, uh, Joe. It, it, well, it says hello, Joe, because uh, the, the the guy at the the, the the guy at the place that I was working at is, is who I basically built it for, because he had to um, inventory uh, cars that came in and get their key codes. Ah. And so this is the key code for security. Ah. And this guy. This guy can override your system, and you could drive a car in that, that the security system didn't work. Ah. 
Oh. And so I, just, I, I designed this to get around the security systems and stuff. You put the key in there. Yeah. And if you if you do this, it's it's basically warning you that it's going into into diagnostics. Yeah. And it will do self diagnostics on itself, and it will actually tell you who made it. It'll come up here here pretty soon. And it actually it actually says. Uh, Says you've entered diagnostics, stupid, because because he wasn't supposed to be in diagnostics. I had a, I had a sense of humor back then, so when I program program things, I used uh, to have a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> but Judd, Judd and Gary cut that into fifteen pieces, and uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I yeah I love little stuff like this. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's a little slow to uh to I can actually I can enter. Yeah, it's 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 slow to move across. Yeah. I can actually adjust that how fast it goes across, but and it should say stupid because it's not supposed okay, to be in there. Okay, a minute. Okay, a minute. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, but yeah. I love it. <clears throat> but it'll, it'll actually tell tell who made it because I always put my name in in the, in the stuff yeah. in the programming because it's like you know. Because I, I have an ego like that, so I have to put my name on there. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put <laughs> no, that. I, uh, no, a lot of times it just proves that I get it. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. But it's like uh, yeah, diagnostics. And then it'll say um, no drug, no diagnostic trouble codes because there isn't any codes in it. This thing, yeah. I, this thing actually went through a car accident and it ripped, ripped the hinges off of it. And uh, so I put these little, little funky hinges on. But right on. Yeah, I am. <coughs> I've had to rig a couple things up in my time. Yeah. Back in Japan, I had to. Uh, well, one. I had to talk to the CNO, <coughs> Chief of Naval Operations, to. So this says property. Proper. Property mm -hmm. of. And. <laughs> d designed by. Then my name will my name will come up, and then the date will come up. So you can kind of see how long ago it's been that I made this. This was back in the 90s I made this. So it's got Frank. I can't do a K with this yeah. with that P. Where are you going? And then it gives the date that I actually made it. 218. February 18th, 1993. Yeah. Yeah, it's that, that tells a loaded file. That way, I can always keep track of the file. I still have the I still have the program on my computer that, that so I designed it with. That ah, doesn't matter. Okay. That kind of changes a couple of functions. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of a funky thing. Where wherever it's at, you can change where it'll either do you know it'll say hello or or it won't. Yeah. A lot of times you just wanted to go directly in, so you could flip that switch and it would just go. And it bypass, so you yeah. don't have to go through everything. Yeah, just bypass. And it does, you know, it, it checks its own batteries and all that kind of stuff. It does all the stuff that you know equipment does. Huh. But, um, that's a pretty tough little unit. It went through a hell of an accident. It got it got rear-ended and it was in the trunk. Ooh. And it, it it flew around in there. So it went through some torture. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some padding on the yeah, inside. And this, yeah. <laughs> but this this was actually done by this artwork was done by a friend of mine. And uh, then I just <laughs> then I typed all this junk into it. Like that. The rocker switch to the far left is the power on off switch. <laughs> when the upper edge is depressed. I love it. Yeah, it's just pretty easy instructions. And this gives you a warning. I, I, I actually put this warning up here for SIR that you, know, you have to be careful that you don't get it into the SIR cables when you're working with the car. It's just a caution because yeah. the airbags could go off. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah, that, that, that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you heard about that guy that died, didn't you? That he was working with, with an airbag and, and it went off on him. I think he was at Boeing. Hmm. Is that recently? Yeah, Debbie oh. told me about it. Oh, anyway, anyway um, let's see. So let's see if we covered everything. Da, 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 da. Right. Oh, <laughs> this is another one that's it's kind of just kind of shows the the attitude is that um, Gary basically took Roy's phone. Roy was supposed to get a new phone. And Roy was. Roy was the guy that um, um, retired, and and uh, he. Did a lot of the uh, planning to get land for bus stops and all that kind of stuff. Okay. He'd been there a long time. Okay. And he, he worked with D a lot of times. You know, they go to 
meetings and stuff and you know. But uh, basically, Roy was supposed to get a new phone that had Siri in it, yeah. and which, which I think Siri is kind of a, a yeah. waste anyway. You know, uh -huh. it doesn't really work like those commercials say. <laughs> that, none of that stuff does. But uh, anyway, he was supposed to get a new phone, and what Gary did was when Roy's phone came in, is Gary took Roy's phone and put it in a new case, and he took Roy's phone for himself. So that kind of shows you, I mean, we, we as IT people are supposed to be above because we control a lot of the information, the data. We are supposed to be above that kind of thing, and we are supposed to serve people. We are not supposed to hide behind locked doors yes. and be unapproachable. Um, have ethics and integrity as a system administrator. Yeah. You have access to everybody. And we're also, log on and and password. we're also supposed to be truthful with people and not, you know, and not lie to them, you know, about things. You know, basically, Martha gave me a hard time one day because she said that she thought that uh, um, the uh, people were losing faith in the IT department. Um, and I'm like, it's too late for that. They are, they, they, had, they had lost faith in the IT department a long time ago, but she was worried that I was telling people things, and I was honest with people. It's like, if we didn't know, it's like, we don't know yet, we will we will find out. She wanted me to lie to people and say, oh yeah, it's this, this, and this, and... Come up with some yeah. extravagant story well, that... Well, cloud computing is in its infancy, you know, it, the, the place really... I mean, it was a 20-year build-out, so I can understand going with cloud computing, and there is some cool things you can do with it, but, you know, at this point... It'll be obsolete. Well, it's not. It's not that it's going to be obsolete, but it's going. To, it's going to get better and better. But at this point, it's the bleeding edge of technology. There's problems. Yeah. And it's just the way it is. Yeah. And uh, so we either shouldn't have done it, you know, and just gone with more conventional stuff, or we just have to live with, you know, bleeding a little bit, you know, yeah. until we can get all these things worked out and fixed. Work out the And you know, there's a lot of places that are using it, the banks and stuff like that. But you know, banks they don't have to use. You know they don't they don't need high powered graphics and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. because you're not going to get high powered graphics with cloud that's just all there is to it mm -hmm. you know and but there are a lot of different ways to do cloud some cloud stuff you use a you know a computer and you're using cloud storage and that's more like a regular server they're just calling it a cloud mm -hmm. the actual cloud with us it's cloud computing it's all done on a central machine you know it's all everything is all. Uh, um, it's 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 one it's basically one server or a couple servers that um, everything sits on and they you share all the resources and you can allocate all the resources and it's a beautiful thing if some people only use two gigs of RAM give them two gigs of RAM but some people may need ten so it's a beautiful thing <coughs> and you can adjust it dynamically if you get a different employee in that spot you can adjust that virtual machine and uh, or you can make a totally new virtual machine get rid of that one and. I mean, it is kind of a beautiful thing in a way, but it's it does have its issues, and and really, you know, I was just trying to be truthful with people, and and, and you know, and not not bullshit them. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the reason why your computer has been slow for the last two years is because there's so much dust in the back of it that are clogging up all the air holes and. Well, e well, even those servers are supposed to be, you know, serviced every now and then, and it was obviously weren't. 